In PTC MathCAD Prime, you can create 3D plots of surfaces that come from functions. In this video, we're going to take a look at three different ones, the hyperbolic paraboloid, the monkey saddle, and the torus. So here I am in my worksheet. Let me position my cursor at a location. For the hyperbolic paraboloid, this function is pretty straightforward. I'll type in the name of the function, and we're going to have the x and the y values then i will use the definition operator and the equation for this is y and then squared i'll use shift six to get to the squared and then let me use the right arrow to position my cursor a little bit to the right and then this is going to be minus x squared once again shift six and enter in the exponent if I want to plot this, I will position my cursor where I want the 3D plot to be. Then I'll go to the Plots tab, and I'll insert a plot. From the drop-down list, we have four different choices, X, Y, Polar, Contour, and the one that I want, the 3D plot. And it drops in on the sheet. Let me expand it and make it bigger right from the get-go. Down at the bottom, this is where we can specify what we want plotted on the z-axis. Now we'll just enter in the name of the function, hp for hyperbolic paraboloid, and then click outside, and we can see the shape of it. And I can even change it. I like to select it and add a bit of surface fill, so I can choose a color so you can see the shape. Let me go to the trace thickness and make it a little bit lighter, and we can spin it around in the little window here. And to be honest, I got the idea for this video because I was at the grocery store with a four-year-old. She grabbed a can of these good crisp potato chips, which are sort of like a healthier version of Pringles potato chips. And I was like, hey, hyperbolic paraboloid. So there you can see what it looks like. And now let me scroll down. Oops, I was trying to scroll down, but I was still in the active window. Let me scroll down and we'll now do the monkey saddle shape. So let me position my cursor somewhere on the sheet. The equation for the monkey saddle, I'm going to call it MS for monkey saddle. That's going to take the arguments X, Y, and then I'll use the definition operator by using the colon key on the keyboard. This is going to be equal to X cubed. So I'll type in X, then shift six, and then let me use the right arrow to move my cursor to the right of the variable. And this is going to be minus three. And then I'll do X. And I'm going to actually hit the multiply key, shift eight, because I'm going to put another variable in here. I don't want it to think that this is part of the same variable. This is going to be three times X times Y squared. So I'll use shift six to get to the exponent. Let's put in squared. And so that is my function. Once again, I can go to the insert plot dropdown. Here is the 3D plot option. I'll make it bigger from the start. And then in the placeholder here, well, I'll just type in the name of the function ms. And you'll notice I'm not using parentheses to put in the arguments. It's just going to be the name of the function itself. Click outside. You can start to see the shape of it. Let me select it and start spinning it around. And yeah, they call it the monkey saddle because, you know, they say, imagine a monkey just sitting in here lying comfortably. I don't know why people would think that, but that's why it is called that. Let's say I want to adjust the lengths of the axes to see more of the shape. Right now, the Z axis is highlighted. And on the right hand side, you can see the range of the tick marks on the Z axis. But I want to change the X and the Y axes. So if I move my mouse over here, you'll notice that I get the tool tip that this is this says it is the axis selector and I can click on it and then I can say, OK, OK, let's change the maximum value to 20. Let's change the minimum value on the X axis to negative 20. And let's select the Y axis and the graph starts to update. Let's change this one as well to positive 20 on the X axis, 
minus 20 on the z-axis, excuse me, on the negative of the y-axis, and then let me select the z-axis so it updates. So it just makes the graph a little bit bigger. So that's how you can adjust how much you are seeing of your 3D surface. And again, you can let me deselect it and select again just so I can get the surface fill to activate. And then I can choose, hey, let's make that a red color. So again, it's nice and vibrant, just pops out at you and you can see the 3D plot. What's interesting also about the monkey saddle is taking a look at the Gaussian curvature and the mean curvature of this shape. Let me scroll down. This is a known function for the Gaussian curvature. I've already written here because it is a complicated form. I don't want to type in that whole thing in the video, but let's create the 3D plot of that. Just going to position my cursor, insert plot, 3D plot, and then for the placeholder, let's enter in the name of the function, which I called K, and then you can see what it looks like, and it's really hard to tell what's going on in here. So I'm going to do a few different things. First off, it looks really jagged inside of here. I'm going to use the number of points dropdown list and really crank this up to get a more refined surface shape. I'm going up to 101. Now it's looking real dense inside of here. I want to once again change the range of the variables on the X and Y axes. Let's change the X axis to go from a value of two to negative two. And I'll do the same thing along the Y axis. Let's change this. I had so many plots, it took a moment to figure out what it was doing and change this to minus two. And you can start to see the shape in a little bit more detail for the Gaussian curvature of it. And it's a really, really neat shape that we have here. And to make it look even better, I'm going to change this axis once again. I'll select on here and I can tell by the orientation it's the x-axis. I'm going to change the maximum value to zero so that it slices right through the middle of that shape. And you can see it once again. Let's select it and change the surface fill. Let's do it with a bit of a transparent surface fill. And I'll change the trace thickness once again to be really light. And we can spin it around in there. Really neat stuff. So that is the Gaussian curvature. You can find this equation in multiple different locations. I did not derive that. Let's go down and also, with the mean curvature, oops, I forgot to type it in here. Luckily, I have another worksheet open. And for the mean curvature, I'm just going to select this and then use Control C. And then let's paste it over in here. Oops, accidentally selected the text box. So this is the equation for the mean curvature. Hey, once again, we can take a look at a 3D plot. Let me go to 3D plot. And in the placeholder, I call this function h. And then let's plot it. Let me grab this and make it bigger. And for the surface fill, I always like a nice bright, bright red shape. Or we can go to a somewhat transparent red shape. I will crank up the number of points again to the maximum value. And for seeing this shape a little bit better, let's adjust the x and y axes again. I'm going to change this to plus and minus a value of 5. Let's do the same thing on the x-axis. Again, it takes a moment because I have so many points being plotted. And click outside of here. There we go. And so there you can see, let me select it and then spin it around inside of here. That is what the mean curvature of the monkey saddle looks like, which is a neat 3D surface in its own right. All right, for the third kind of surface in this video, let's take a look at a torus. 
And for the torus, I'm going to write this in a slightly different format. I just grabbed the side of the text box and made it a little bit narrower. Let me position my cursor. And to type in the function, I'm going to call this torus. And I'm going to make it a function of two variables. I'm going to use u and v this time. You don't always have to use x and y. And this is going to be equal to, and rather than specifying it in an explicit equation, you can use a matrix of functions, and that'll be for the x, y, and z values of the surface. Let's go to the matrices tables tab. I will insert a matrix, and it'll be a vector. It'll just have a single column, but it will have three rows. And for the first value, that'll determine the x-coordinates of the surface. And this is going to be A plus the cosine, oh, forgot something, B times the cosine of V. And this whole thing, let me use the right arrow. This is going to be multiplied times the cosine of the U value. And the Y value is going to be almost the same. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to select it, Control C, click on the placeholder, Control V. And this is going to be times the sine of U. And then the Z values are going to be determined by B times the sine of V. And I have these values A and B, and these exponents are just so I can change the radius of the circle of the torus and also the radius of the torus itself. So let me plug in some values here. You can see that we're getting an error here that A is undefined. Let's use A. This is going to have a value of 20. And You'll notice now that B is highlighting. It's like, hey, this var variable is undefined. Let's do B is going to have a value of 8. This just allows me to plug in different values in order to change the size of the torus. So now that we have the functions, let's put in our 3D plot. Let's go to the Plots tab, Insert Plot, 3D Plot. And then I will type in the name of the function, which is torus and click outside and you can see what the shape looks like. Now this one, I especially want the different axes to be normalized. It's actually distorting the shape because the Z axis is on a different range than the X and the Y axis. I can see that the X and the Y axis go from a value of negative 30 to positive 30. So let's do the same thing on the Z axis. Let's try changing this to a value of 30, and then change this to a value of minus 30, and click outside. And so now we can see what the shape of the torus looks like. Hey, it's the donut shape. So if you ever wondered what a donut actually was, it's called a torus. Let's crank up the number of points. For this shape, I'm not going to go all the way up to the max of 101. Let's just crank it up a little bit more. Let's put in a nice surface fill. Let's see, I haven't used this color yet. Let's click on it and just make the trace thickness a little bit lighter. And once again, we can click in here and we can take a look at what our torus shape looks like. So that's how you can create three different surfaces in 3D plots inside of PTC MathCAD Prime, the hyperbolic paraboloid, the monkey saddle, and the torus. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.